Uh, hey, hey. hey, what's up? What's up, guys? It's Jay's Two Cents. How's this thing sound? I, I didn't I didn't even do like a <clears throat> an audio test or any of that any of that crap. I was just like, you know what? This is how this is how we used to do it back in the day when it was just me. Um, yeah, Barnacles is out again. I don't know, sick something. I don't know, but yeah, he's he's out. So it's just me. Uh, and for that, uh, I kind of apologize. It's just me because, um, yeah, mic quality is even shit. Or not mic, but camera quality is even crap right now. So anyway, uh, I got a few things I want to talk about. Some graphics cards stuff again. And I kind of like it when I do it this way because I don't have to wear headphones. That's I don't like wearing headphones. My head gets sweaty. It makes my hair all flat. And I need a haircut, by the way. But whatever. So here's what we're going to do. I'm gonna talk about a few things as you guys, uh, if you guys follow on the social medias, which you should be, and everyone's always like, I don't wanna follow on Twitter. But then those are the people that are always like, Jay, are you gonna do a video about this? But you would know if you were on Twitter because I am a Twitter slut. It's the only way to, it's, that's, the, that's the reality of it all. Anyway, so we're gonna do a few things today. Like I said, I wanna talk about the Vive because I've seen plenty of Vive demos, but the thing about the Vive, in my, in my opinion, is it's more than just, putting on a headset and then trying it out, all right? The, the total user experience is going to be, um, what's it like to set it up? Uh, how much horsepower does it really take to run? And all of that, that's kind of the whole user experience. It's one thing to walk in some place where they've already calibrated it and set up the room and you just put it on in their perfect you know, scenario. And then it's another thing to set this up yourself. Like in, in a home, you've got things you gotta worry about. Like, and, and yes, guys, I know I haven't shaven or done anything. I've literally all day, been playing with the Vive. So, um, yeah, I mean, like in, in, in my upstairs um, family room I have here, there's a there's an overhead fan that obviously I've constantly got to be concerned about. I don't feel like sticking my hands up in that. Um, so, yeah, I want to talk about that kind of stuff. And then I want to talk about graphics cards. Again, we always talk about graphics cards. Um, people asking about the 480. Yeah, it's right here. I can show you that. See, there it is. But uh, I got I to gotta go ahead and roll that intro. So here it goes. I don't have anyone to sing the intro song. And I don't want to sing. I can, but I don't want to. You can't pick me either. Yeah. Tell me if this mic is peaking or anything like that. Um, I think I've got it pretty well tuned. My little meter over there, it's just under the yellow and stuff. I don't have a pop filter yet, so hopefully it's not all popping. Oh, look, I put the wrong thingy up there. Yeah, there we go. Single camera, that's what we want. So Hobseltoff is my moderator in here. You guys piss him off, you deal with him. Got it? You deal with him, not me. I'm not gonna ban people. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let the people I've set to ban people ban people. Uh, right now, everyone's job is to go onto the Twitters um, and tell everyone on your social media. Tell your mom, your grandma, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your girlfriend and your boyfriend. Tell your wife and your wife's boyfriend, whoever that we're streaming. Let's get in here. Um, Cause I don't do that. I always forget to do that. I start these streams up. I've been doing this for four years now. And you would think that um, you would think that uh, it would be easier to get this going and have like a routine, but no, I don't. Um, all right, let's see here. We are live. Yeah, we're live and, and unfortunately leaking. Uh, my friend Skype. My bad. Sorry, guy. Rip. Okay, we are live right now. On tech talk, and we're gonna actually talk about tech because I don't got barnacles here making me go off track all the time and making me late and stuff. That's okay. We weren't late last week though because remember I started it without him, and then he came in because he had. Of course, it's like forty nine seconds to live stream, and he's like, "I gotta go pee. We're right back." Like, oh my god. Anyway, here is the RX four eighty. We already talked about that. Um, it's you know what's really sad is I showed this. And I went, hey guys, look, it's my RX 480. And do you know how many people were like, oh my God, are you going to make a video? And it's like, mm -hmm. smash my face with the thing. Anyway, yes, obviously I'm making a video about it. Um, this guy came in today. I've already showed this a bunch. <laughs> this thing right here, it's almost as big as my junk, just saying. But anyway, um, this is the 1080 amp extreme edition and if you want to see size wise 
compared to this, this, <laughs> this right here. I'm trying to hit the mic. But check this out, guys. I can touch the mic, and it doesn't kill your ears, right? That's cool, huh? Because the cable doesn't make that noise anymore. So this right here is the EVGA 1080 SC. This is a founder's board, right? It's, it's, so the dimensions of this guy is the same as a founder's card. So to give you a perspective of how big that is, yeah, <laughs> that's just like, hey, you know what? I got, I got a small pecker, but I got a big GPU. No, not, it's not that bad, but it's, it's a triple slot card. It takes up three slots in your graphics card, in your motherboard. So if you have a motherboard that requires slot spacing be single slot, so they have to be sandwiched, then you could not actually put um, two of these in there. Anyway, yeah, this thing is huge. It also takes two ten uh, or two two ten pin plugs. Yeah, that's it. No, it takes two um, eight pin power on there. Uh, I, I have no idea what to expect of this. The amount of the amount of heat pipes in there. Oh god, I don't know. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, like six heat pipes or something like that. So I, I'm really interested to see how far this goes. Of course, you see rumors all the time. Everyone's like, oh my god, the amp extreme guaranteed to hit 2.2 gigs or 2.3 gigs or 6.2 gigawatts. I don't even know, um, to be honest. I haven't even looked at that. But I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's got lights everywhere. I'm pretty sure that these all light up on there, on the top right here, lights up. Yeah. So anyway, to give you a little size comparison, yeah, there, <laughs> there it is right there. There's, there's no making that up. That's just so big. Um, in terms of PCB, the PCB is let's see it's nearly as long as the entire length of that cooler it goes to right there like right there where my fingernail is is the pcb so it's not one of those things where we're like on the rx 480 here you can see how you know an extra third of the card right there a third of the link or a quarter of the length is the extended cooler so it could pull in air from both sides as you can see um but this, the pcb is actually really small Let's just compare the PCB size of this guy to the 480 then. Let's, let's take the cooler out of it and look at the PCB difference there. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. So when I opened this up, I knew it was big. Huh, ladies, I knew it was big. Uh, what was that the third dick joke already? We're only seven minutes in. This is just like classic tech talk right here. Um, I had seen Paul's coverage on this at Computex. I saw Kyle's. Everyone went to Zotax booth. This was like one of the... This is kind of one of the cards that people have been waiting on because Zotac has a pretty good history with the Amp Extreme line of graphics cards. So everyone's been waiting on that. Um, fun fact, this was actually the first review I had lined up. Uh, I had already had communication with Zotac and set this review in motion back at the NVIDIA event in Austin, Texas back in May. Um, but it took them longer to get this card released, as you guys probably know. Everybody's taking forever to get their cards out. So it's unfortunately not first in my lineup. But I'm excited to see how far it can go. And the reason why I'm looking forward to this card is because I put two GTX 1070s in the the simulator slash VR rig. I kind of repurposed the, the computer that I had built just for the racing simulator um, to be now my VR simulator because that's in the same family slash game room that I have up there for um, you know doing gaming and, and VR. And I did two, 70s, two 1070s in that. And unfortunately, Project Cars is not working properly with VR in SLI. Huh, go, cool. yeah. Big surprise there, right? SLI issues. So I'm just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go with one 1080. And if that one's like super powerful, then that's fine with me. Um, but we will be moving into Q&A here pretty soon. I'm only going to be streaming for an hour because I've got to clean up the living room up there. I actually did... Um, cable channeling or channel cable cable channeling whatever wire channeling so that i could hide the wires on the wall um, to make it look nice because married and if it looks like an eyesore then the wife isn't happy and if you don't have a happy wife you don't have a happy life and if you're married you know that uh, but anyway if you guys want to start getting your questions in um, you can do things like at hashtag ask tech talk on twitter um, there you can also use um comment section here, which is not going to be easy because of how much it flies by. And then even though Jerry is not here, the exact same policy regarding donations is in place. Look in the description if you guys are interested on how to how that actually works. I see a lot of people every week going, I don't see the donate button. It is controlled by region. So if you live in like Germany and other places where for whatever reason, 
like the laws there are you can't donate money to people, then you can't, the button's not there. So unless you're on a VPN or something like that, you can't really circumvent that. So anyway, with that said, have I, Tony James says, have you seen the dream screen yet? I have no idea what that is. So I'm going to say no. I don't know. Um, the, the vibe, I want to move into that. Setting it up is actually pretty easy. Um, I'm, I'm dealing with where when I did the room setup, it warned me that, that my sensors might be a little too far apart because the room is kind of big. And I even sort of partitioned off the room so that only part of it is used for VR. So I might have to move one of the sensors closer. So far, it hasn't seemed to have any tracking issues. Um, but um, it just, it warned me. But I've been playing Project Cars on it most um, because it's it's the one game in my library that's kind of like already set up where literally I could just open up Steam VR, launch Project Cars, and it was ready. What was happening with SLI was it was flickering. Holy cow. When my daughter cries, she sounds like a banshee. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear that. Anyway, uh, what happened to Jerry? He died. Anyway, um, so yeah, th what was happening is if you guys have seen Vive, you can actually virtual desktop. Not like virtual desktop like you know today where you just log in from another computer and access another desktop. It's literally a virtual desktop. So you look around a floating room and it's and it's your desktop and it's floating. It's really cool. So you can look at what you want and it has a crosshair and then you can use the controllers to activate things or you can use the mouse if you want. Um, whenever I would launch Project Cars, the, the Project Cars screen inside of, of the VR would start flickering like really bad, like strobe, strobe effect kind of thing. And um, I was going, what the heck is going on? All of my VR experience had been fine. If I took off the headset and looked on the monitor, it was smooth as could be. No flickering. But in the headset, it was flickering. So I just did a quick um, search on um, Reddit. Yeah, believe it or not, I did a search and it brought me to Reddit. And I, I'm seeing a lot of people complaining about that. And apparently right now, Project Cars in VR with SLI is, is buggy, which kind of sucks. So that's why I'm going back to one GPU. But what I love about... When I built this simulator rig last year and then took it apart and then put it back again, together again when I moved this year, the concept of it was I had done, I did the surround screens to get me by. But what, what I really wanted was an Oculus or some sort of VR because I had seen Jerry's video two years ago of the Oculus SDK with iRacing and it looked amazing from his experience. But the problem was it was a 1080p you know, lens and it or screen you know but with the lens and the screen door effect was really really bad even though the vive is 1440 there's still screen door but it's not that it's not that bad it's really not it's just you take 1440 and you stick it against your face you're going to get some some screen door effect but it's so much better than surround panels because even though you've got multiple panels set up on a racing simulator it's still flat there's no depth perspective so when you drive uh, if you want to know what it's kind of like driving on a racing simulator with flat, with, you know, with screens, if you've never been on a racing simulator, try going outside and driving with with an eye patch and one eye covered, and everything's flat perspective. There's no depth. Um, yeah, I actually don't recommend that you do that. To be honest, I'm gonna take that back. I didn't say do that. Put on an eye patch or t put close one eye, put tape on it, something, and just go walk around your house. Try playing catch with someone. I guarantee. It's going to like, the ball's going to smack you in the face. Your, the balls are going to be against your face, just like that. You know, take it how you will. Because with two eyes, you have a depth percep percep perspective, depth perception, yes. And that's why you have two eyes, so that you can see how far away something is. I can see this mic is about one-third the distance between me and the monitor. But if I cover one eye, it's like, I can't tell how far away it is. Because no matter what perspective I look at it, it's one-dimensional. Um... Racing simulators are the same way. And so once you put on the Vive or any sort of VR headset, uh, you look at it and it's like, there's depth. You can see how far away the turn is coming up. You can look around. You know, you, you, you could change your whole perspective in the car. If you take your head and you lean it out the window in the game, you are leaning your head out the window and you're looking at your car. It's really, really, really weird. If you stop your car, or even if you don't stop it, and you just stand up in your seat, your head goes through the roof and you're looking down like an out, uh, like a outside perspective. It's really, it's really uh, realistic. And so I, I had a lot of issues with, with surround VR or surround gaming with uh, the racing sim 
where it was fun, but it was still simcady no matter what. It, it, it's, it's realism was just negated by the fact that you're looking at flat screens. So once you put on the headset, it's a whole new perspective. And that one game alone is one of the things that made me really want a Vive. Because like I said, I built the sim rig for that purpose. It just, VR wasn't, re wasn't retail ready last year when I built it. Um, so it's, it's pretty neat. At E3 even, uh, the Thrustmaster booth did had, they had VR set up. But I think they had PlayStation VR set up and they were doing, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was PlayStation that, that they were doing Gran Turismo. But whatever. They, they had a set of courses set up for PC, but it wasn't in VR. Um, so yeah, that was fun. Um, the wife, who's never experienced VR ever. I didn't know if she was going to be sensitive or sick. VR, in the beginning, made me feel like, like crap, quite honestly. And so um, because of that, the... Um, uh, I didn't know if she was going to be sensitive or feel nauseous or whatever, but it's really good. She went through the whole VR setup demo thing and she didn't have any issues whatsoever. She was having fun. In fact, she was like, wow, this is cool. She was making balloons pop and all that stuff. So I'm looking forward to, um, I'm looking forward to NVIDIA's Funhouse being launched because I think Little J will have fun with that. That's just a bunch of carnival games, but it's not out yet. And that's what kind of sucks about having the Vive right now is it's still bleeding edge. And what that means is there's not a lot available for it yet. So it's an $800 headset. And uh, so you spend 800 bucks on that. And hopefully you have a system that's already VR ready. And then it's like, okay, what am I going to play? There's demos and a couple of games. That's it. So it's going to take some time to see what happens. Fortunately, though, at E3, just about everyone that was demoing or displaying some sort of VR was um, saying that it's going to be available on both Oculus and Vive and um, PlayStation's VR. Coming. Is it PlayStation 3 or, or Samsung? Sony? Is it Sony? I don't know. There's another VR headset out there that's coming up, and I forget what it is. I think it's Play, PlayStation Sony's VR. Um, but that they're going to be available on both, which is a big deal because the I think it would be just so bad to have an $800 headset that is dealing with exclusivity like consoles. I mean, that would really suck, right? It's like you buy a Vive. Or let's say you buy an Oculus, an Oculus. But Vive is just dominating the market because they're actually shipping units. And suddenly you have, you have an Oculus and it's always like exclusively for Vive. Exclusively for Vive. And exclusives don't do anybody any good, console or not. It's always going to be the way it is. But anyway. So with that said, let's go ahead and move into Q&A. Um, if you guys... Um, any donation questions that get sent using the, the link in the description will guaranteed to get answered. But moving forward here, I'm going to go ahead and move over to Twitter. So let me get that up over here. Let's see, we got uh, Onion. You can use hashtag ask tech talk. All one word, ask tech talk. I see people like ask tech talk and the number. I've seen a bunch of, of hashtags used that are just not correct. So anyway, Tanner Locklear says, do you think an R9 380 run VR smoothly with AAA games in lowest settings at all? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's not a very powerful GPU. And it takes quite a bit of GPU power to maintain that magical 90 hertz. I don't know the science behind it. I can, I, I can just tell you that whoever the mad scientists are behind generating VR and, and developing for it and creating VR have said that 90 hertz is that, that magic number where, where nausea nausea or whatever, vertigo and all that stuff tends to kind of go away. So 90, 90 hertz is where, or 90 FPS technically is what 90 hertz is going to be refresh. As long as those frames are consistently timed and not stuttering, um, that's the number you want. And I, the question you have to ask yourself is, can an R9 380 generate that image twice at 1440p, one for each eye, at that frame rate and not stutter? I don't think so. So I doubt it. <laughs> Damon Breckheimer, are you planning to go two-way or three-way SLI with uh, GTA, uh, GTX 1080 and Skunk Works? So I have three cards, but I think I'm only going to install two of them because NVIDIA is, has still not finalized plans on how they're going to deal with SLI. They came up with the enthusiast key, and then they dropped it. And now they're like, well, we'll do three-way, but it's only going to work in benchmarking suite, uh, apps. And it's up to the developers to code for three-way if they want to do it in DX12. 
DX12 right now in SLI is already like, mm, some stuff is not working very good. Like Tomb Raider in SLI and DX12 is, is foobard. I've thrown Tomb Raider. I've been doing SLI 1070 and 1080 testing. And I threw Tomb Raider out. I'm like, you know what? Rise of the Tomb Raider, I'm not using it. Because DX12 doesn't work. Um, I say it doesn't work. It's buggy. And when I go to DX11 and enable SLI, because SLI doesn't work in DX12 on Rise of the Tomb Raider. Um, the moment you go to DX12 or DX11, great results for both 4K and 1440. But once I go to 1080, I get, I was getting 30 FPS less with two 1080s and I was with one. So SLI scaling for two for, for 1080 isn't working. And I don't think it has anything to do with a bottleneck because I would have at least expected to see the same FPS that I was getting with a single card if it were truly a CPU bottleneck. So I don't know, I threw it out. Um, Young Gun says, how well does the HB SLI bridge work? Wait for my video. Um, and let's just put it this way. My findings were, um, what was the word I used? Because I've reached out to both, or I reached out to NVIDIA, and then I reached out to NVIDIA through EVGA because I wasn't getting any answers. And my findings were inconclusive on whether or not there's a tangible, noticeable improvement. And my video, I use a single flex bridge, and then I test all the, all my, I'm using synthetics right now, like built-in benchmarks, rather than free gaming and moving my mouse around and stuff, because we're dealing with such a small percentage of, of difference here that if if the test isn't on a track where it's exactly the same every time, I can't get consistent results on the experience. So I'm not I'm not like using free roam gaming to to measure the FPS. I'm using things that are on a track. Like I'm gonna be using the divisions built in benchmark, obviously things like Fire Strike, Heaven and all that stuff to see if there's truly any sort of difference. And what we're gonna be doing here is um, using a single flex bridge to see if you know, our baseline readings, and then using a hard bridge, like the EVGA LED bridge like I have here in Skunk Works, <clears throat> and then using the, <clears throat> excuse me, and then using the NVIDIA HB bridge, um, and I have an e EVGA 1.2 to see if there's a tangible difference. I'm going to add one more test in there, and I'm going to use two flex bridges to see, because, you know, if you use a, fle a flex bridge, and you stick it in, you stick it in, you stick it in uh, the graphics cards, then the NVIDIA's control panel warns you like, hey, you're not using the right kind of bridge. But when you use a standard hard bridge, not an HB bridge, that warning goes away, by the way. So I want to, uh, to test that out. Tim A says, thoroughly impressed with EVGA customer service. Takes two weeks to send stuff to California, but they're accommodating as hell. Two weeks, wow, where are you, where are you at? Um... Let's see here. Am I I'm planning to upgrade my camera to 4K or 60 FPS, etc.? Why? Why do we need? Why do I? Why do I need to make talk 4K talking head videos? Um, I'm not planning on spending money to give 60 FPS blah 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 videos because that's just. I mean, it's not high action or motion or whatever. And 4K. My internet sucks where I'm at. I know, and I know 60 by 4 to some people are like, that doesn't suck. It sucks when I had 30 by, uh, when I had 300 by 25. So I'm not going to render 4K videos and make it take four hours to upload. I'm not, it's not that important to me. Um, do you think pr Pascal prices will go down soon for manufacturer's versions, not founders? No, I don't. I don't think pricing is going to change until a new card is out. Ch pricing is fucked up with NVIDIA this time around, and it's just the way it is. It sucks. Has your client for Red Mist gotten 1080s yet? Yes, he has. He already has them in hand. Um, please talk vibe. How is it? I already did that. Hey, Jay, do you think that the 1080 Ti will have HBM2 or even exist? I don't know. We just got the 1080s. It's not like 1080 Ti is really a subject right now. Of course, people like... Like WCCF tech or like the TMZ of tech are are always going to report on that sort of stuff because they want the clicks. But I don't know what the actual, I don't know, the, I don't know if the leaks are true or not. And I don't talk about leaks. I never have in the three and a half years I've, almost four years I've had this channel. I'm not going to start now. Kenny Clems Clems says too much tech. I know, right? I'm not talking about cars. I'm talking about cars. Um, I just got my CSF. A uh, triple row race radiator installed on my car. So summer heat here where I'm at is no longer going to be any sort of a concern. 
Michael Wajdelia. 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 What is the history of your cars, guys? Why do you love them so much? How did you decide to get them? Um, oh, that actually goes back to June 16th. Okay, I'll answer that, even though that was two weeks ago, right? Is that? No, it was a week ago. My math is hard. I just always liked cars. I don't know. It's just something that... It's like the same reason why you're into tech. It's because it just speaks to you. And cars are the same thing for me. How do you choose cars? Well, that's a hard That's a hard one. This is... When I got my 350 last year, it was my first time owning a Z. And I took a chance to see if I'd like it. And I did. That's why I got the 370 now. Because I wanted the better one. Could I go back to a single screen 1080p 60 if I had to? That's what's on the rig right, the simulator rig right now, because when I hooked up the Vive, I had to use HDMI. One of my panels over there was using HDMI. So I unhooked the two on the side. So I just have the one 24 inch 60 1080 in the, in the middle. Yeah, I couldn't go back to that day to day. I couldn't. I'm just too used to big, high density real estate, like lots of screen space because of all the editing and stuff that I do. So it's one of those things where it's kind of like, you get so used to something, it's not easy to just go back. It's really not. Um, let's see here. Um, okay. Evan Watson says, For a PC where I won't have to upgrade the CPU for about five years, do you think it's worth it to get a 6850K over the 6800K? Um, five years is kind of a long time. But if you, wanna, if you want to... If you want the computer to last five years without feeling like it's dated, then you need to get the best that you can afford. So whatever that is. And if you could afford even higher than a 6850K, do it. Um, maybe like 6930. Is that what the new one's called? Whatever. Uh, <clears throat> Arcanum Luminarium says, Considering a Blackmagic Deck Link Studio 4K and an Elgato HD60 Pro card for live stream with two cameras, your opinion. I've been thinking about doing the capture card for, for camera on live stream like this, because then I could use like my FDRX33, which is a technically a 4K camera, um, but I could get a better camera for the live stream. But the problem is, because I'd have to use an interface like the Elgato, even a little bit of lag is going to be noticeable. You guys can see right now, even though I'm rendering from a webcam on the same machine, um, so there, there's still like a, a weird audio sync and I've had to delay the image about a hundred milliseconds to try and sync it up with audio but the problem is it's not consistent it flutters around a little bit um, I, once you add an Elgato like that then you're adding even more tuning that has to take place between the audio and the video if you're willing to do all that for the sake of, of better uh, video on a live screen a live stream remember any live stream you stream to Twitch um, you stream or I guess technically you stream is, is do you see you stream still around is that what became twitch um hitbox whatever they're all going to super compress they're going to compress uh the the video signal and stuff to a, a quality that's probably not going to be, be indicative of what you're capturing so that's going to be up to you um let's see here Um, Tanner Lockley, I already answered that, didn't I? I fangirled so hard, thanks for answering. Oh, you're welcome. No fangirl. Fanboy's fine, but don't, don't fangirl. I'm planning to go, Sasa, Sasa, Sasa says, I'm planning to go for a G1 GTX 964 gigabyte for a new build for gaming engineering at around 1100. Any better recommendations? Well, if you, if you want to do engineering on it, like if you're going to be using CAD, you're going to want to go with something better than a 960. I mean, even if you got something like an old 780 Ti, that would do better than 960. Um, especially if your CAD programs are going to be able to tap into any of that CUDA power. Um, Moose78 says, I have one 980 Ti Classy at the moment. Single 1080 for the win or a 980 Ti classified in SLI. Which would be better upgrade opinion right now? Or option right now? You have a single 980 Ti Classy at the moment. Single 1080 for the win. Well, a single 1080 is much faster than 980 Ti. Um, Ti classified in SLI is going to be much faster than a 1080, and you could get another 980 for cheaper than a 1080 will cost you. Maybe about the same you'd have to add uh, to get a second one as you'd have to add after selling a 980 to get a, a Ti or a 1080. So unless you need Pascal's improvements in 
VR capability, VR surround, things like um, simultaneous multi-projection, which is supposed to be the fix for the flatness of three panels. If you don't need any of that additional tech, then I stick with your older card. Um, the advancements of Pascal, with the exception of just being like really fast FPS, usually much higher than refresh rates, is going to be pretty much negated um, by the fact that if unless you're using those additional techs for VR, which is in there, then you're really you're really just for the sake of having bragging rights to be like I've got the latest and greatest are not going to see much of a return on your investment. I don't think that's but that's kind of the way I look at it every time a new graphics card comes out. Flying uh, Flying J99 says, "Can you remind us what utility you are using for overlay temp and FPS display? It's Afterburner. It's built in. It's called on-screen display OSD. You got to turn it on in the monitoring tab, and then you check which ones you want to monitor." Um, how does the RX 480 stack up to everyone else? You just got to wait for the reviews. No one's going to tell you that right now. It's under NDA. Three 1080p monitors or two 1440 for gaming? Why would you? You wouldn't use two. Because if you tell NVIDIA to span the display with two panels, it's going to make the middle where the bezels are. So it would literally be like the middle where the bezels meet is the middle of the screen. So that's where your crosshairs is going to be. That's where your guns are going to be, whatever you're, whatever you're doing. That's, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> so how about one 1440p and get an ultra wide, like a 3440 by 1440, like I'm using here. Amazing. It's the... It's the it's such a better experience than dealing with surround, in my opinion. Because the problem with surround is you're counting on software to like stitch the panels together, and then to do it seamlessly. So it fools the operating system into thinking it's one panel, but it's not. And um, it I've I've done it in the past. I've had it on the sim rig too. It's it's finicky. It's it, switching to and from games where you have a stretched desktop. And then going into a game where it's got to kind of load the game and launch DirectX, right? S hook the API. And then it's got to render the image. Sometimes you have one screen that will turn off and doesn't want to come back on. So you have to power it off, power it on, and then it will show up. Same thing when you leave the game. Um, sometimes it, it, you sw go into a game and come back out and it rearranged all your icons. No matter how you set them up, it'll rearrange it. It's just enough problems with surround, which is why although multi-projection... Um, a simultaneous multi-projection is kind of neat that they've started to really kind of play around with the multi-panel issues. Um, I've, I've had such a difficult time with it that I don't want to go back to it, regardless of the updates. Warren Hyman says, Jay, if I upgrade my MOBO, will it see my hard drive? Depends. So, the operating system is a lot better now at... Um, De detecting hardware changes. For instance, I took the hard drives out of the si out of the simulator rig, put them into a different computer, and the motherboard initially set up set up all the devices, reboots, and then everything worked. Took the, took it out, put it back in the other machine. Same thing. It just worked. Um, but that depends, and I, I can't even tell you what it depends on. Sometimes it doesn't work, and it just doesn't want to. Sometimes you get a UEFI boot failure, where it can't load into the Windows UEFI. And the op and the BIOS just can't make heads or tails of booting the hard drive. So good luck. That's all I can say. Jason says, "Hey, cool name." He says, "Do you think two 360 millimeter radiators will be enough for a 5820K and two GTX 1080s?" Absolutely. The GTX 1080 is extremely efficient um, when it comes to heat. And I know a lot of people right now are gonna are like, "What the f are you talking about, man?" The 1080, it's all over the news. The 1080 has heating problems. You know, uh, last night when I was building the, the computer for the simulator, I put two 980 Ti's in there, reference cards. And I forgot just how hot and how loud the Maxwell cards are, the big, the big GPUs are, compared to what the 1080's are now. And I immediately realized, you know what? The 1080's, although, yeah, they still will get up to 83C, obviously, with a reference cooler, is a heck of a lot more efficient and, and when it comes to heat and temperature than the 980 Ti's were. So that's why I took them out and put the 1070's in because, yeah, I forgot just how loud they were. Coconut Monkey was in the room watching Game of Thrones and it was like every time I turn on a benchmark to get the cards dialed in because I was overclocking them, it's just they were so freaking loud that um, I was like, yeah, 
Um, I'm not going to use these. So you get plenty of radiator space there. Ra Ryan he Heiser, Ryan Heiser says, heard anything about the MSI GTX 1080 Seahawk? Nope, haven't. Tom Dunyan, Dunyan says, what was your first car or your most memorable favorite car you've ever owned? Well, my favorite car is Nizzy. Uh, my first car was a 1985 Ford Ranger 5-speed with fuel injection, which is actually kind of a big, big deal because um, that was like the first year that Ford had introduced the fuel injection into the, the four cylinders. So that was kind of neat. Anyway... It's kind of it's kind of nice actually that there's no donation comments coming in because now I don't have to worry about like dividing my attention. My attention feels equally divided. Let's um, we'll let Twitter rest here for a minute and we'll just check out some of the comments here in uh, in the chat. Rest in peace, Jerry. You will not be missed. Well, that's rude. That's not a reference cooler, it's a founder cooler. Oh, excuse me, you are absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Um, want to sell my 980 Ti for buy a 1080 for 1080p. Is it worth it? Pl please answer me, I need answer tonight. That's a terrible idea. It's a terrible idea to get a 1080 for 1080p if you're not running a super high refresh, like 144 hertz or more. It's not a good idea. Um, and especially if you're trying to replace a 980, uh, what would you say it was, 980 Ti? Yeah, that's a terrible idea. 4K ultra wide will be awesome. You know what? So w when 4K started like two years ago, everyone's like, 4K, 4K, 4K. And um, it was one of those things where, uh, so Hobseltop says, I think your donation button's gone. No, it's not. I clicked it. I should donate to myself, huh? Yeah. Anyway, um, the problem with 4K was even 4K 60 hertz didn't feel like 60 hertz on 1440 or, or 1080p. It was hard to explain. It just felt, and I was even having this conversation with AMD the other day, um, 4K 60 feels heavy. I don't know how to explain it. It feels like there's a slight amount of input lag, and um, it, it just it didn't feel fluid, even though it was 60 FPS, which is that magic number. So... Now that 4K is going to be capable with 120 hertz, if that input lag is gone, and if we can get 4K ultra wide, which would be perfect for like, you know, even movies and stuff, I might be sold on that as long as I can experience it. Um, okay, let's see here. At Logan, Jay don't like rumors. I don't want to report on rumors. I there's enough people out there doing rumors and I, I'm just, I don't know, I, I don't like to fuel rumor mills, if that makes sense. Call me weird, I don't know. Um, 1070 for 1080p, two monitor, 60 hertz, maybe 1440p um, in the near future, or should I just get a 980 or 980 Ti? That's a lot of questions, like, should I get a 1070 or should I get a 1080? Or should I get two 1440p or should I get two 1080? Or should I get a 980 or should I get a 980? You got to ask like one question, dude. 1080 SLI versus... And it went away. My bad. Okay. Um, circle. With... Damn. I You know, YouTube does this thing where the comments will freeze for a second and I'll start to read something. And then it scrolls away really fast, and I can't find where it was. So, whatever. Sorry, guys. A moderator's telling me that the donation system seems to be down. I don't know. I've never actually followed. I've never actually like followed the links to see where they go. To be honest with you. Um. Okay. Ask Tech Talk, what do you think about Razer's VR solution, OSVR? Okay, so I tried OSVR when it was like brand new. It's CES 2015. And I didn't like it. I did not like it at all. It, it didn't track very well. See, you had to do this with your hands like all the time because it was supposed to be hand tracking. And it was like not tracking my hands. And it, it was laggy and I didn't like it. But that was two years ago. So I don't know 
whether or not uh, it's gotten better. But based on the like very early models, I didn't like it. And that was one of the reasons why I just wasn't even happy about Oculus or Vive. I was like, whatever, VR is so terrible. No, n not anymore. It's changed. <laughs> yeah, if you guys... If you guys did donate, we apologize right now because my moderator and Jerry is saying that they tried it right now to see what was happening and it's not coming through. So if it took your money and it didn't come through, I highly apologize for that. And that's the problem with YouTube. YouTube. I'm on the YouTubes. I feel weird. I've been playing in VR all day, so my... my is this real life? Is this really happening right now? Coming on Zen nearing. Um, so, okay, when I had my, 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 my meeting with AMD the other day, I asked that question. I said, are we still on track to see maybe some Q4, Q1 Zen stuff? And all I did was smile and then say they couldn't answer. So, I don't know. I don't know. Will timestamps come on TikTok? I don't have anybody to go through and timestamp it for me, and I'm I don't timestamp as I'm going, so probably not. Hebu says, "Hey Jay, what case would be good for full custom water cooling loop? I have Cooler Master Stacker, but I'm looking for an update. I'm running one two forty rad and a three hundred and sixty. Most cases today would would accommodate that. Um, Fantex has a very good line of cases." built specifically towards water cooling. Um, Fractal Design over like the last year and a half or so has really started accommodating larger radiators, um, more options for mounting radiators and even reservoirs. So like the Define um, S is actually a really good case for water cooling. Um, in fact, I might, be I might move all my stuff into the Define S because I still have that. I'm using the Fractal Arc XL right now as the gaming slash VR rig, but it's too big. I need something smaller and easier to move around. So I'm thinking about moving it into that case. And I'm thinking about also doing a full custom water loop on it once I get the hardware I want, like completely ironed out, if you will. Any info on the mayhem problems? Um, they're waiting on me. They're waiting on me right now. And I'm, I just want to give this fluid plenty of time to change. This is where it is right now. Um, yeah, it looks red. It's actually orange. It's just the camera. Um, you can see how different the color of the, the tops are versus the fluid. But yeah, it looks red, but it's not. Trust me, it's just the way the camera picks it up. Um, also, too, the white LEDs tend to bring out a lot of the red dye that makes up orange. They look like they're the same color, right? And yeah, I know that both my reservoirs are not topped off. I just never bothered um, to take my TIE fighter down. If I do that, get the condensation out there. Yeah, I just never bothered filling it up because this was temporary. Um, they look like they haven't changed color, right? But they have, actually. I, I took the the mix that I made, because I still have like that much of a gallon, like in the bottom of a gallon container, uh, of the mix that was not in here, and I compared it. And yeah, these are both much, much darker than the, the color was originally. So here, I, I was looking at this going, dim. these are not changing color. What the frig is happening? Then I compared it. I'm like, oh, okay, well, they just both change color like at the same rate. So that's where we are on that. So I need to, whoa, try not to get sick. Sorry, having to get the cable out of the way. So I'm going to be sending that off to Mayhems in England to inspect. I'll also be giving some of the fluid to um, hardware labs to inspect. I'm also gonna be giving the radiators back. Uh, I'm gonna give one of the radiators to Mayhems so that they can do a metallurgy test. And then I'm going to be giving one to Hardware Labs. So all the players involved are getting pieces of, of the pie or the puzzle. And then we're just going to see what happens. I really, really hope we don't end up with one company just pointing their fingers at the other. Because that won't get us anywhere. But I do know that even though that even though Mayhems hasn't gotten the fluid yet, that they have been working on improvements in their own lab testing with high heat. Because one of the things that um, we think has contributed to this but it's not the leading cause, but just a contribution to the issue, is um, the heat with three Titan X's and then having the VRMs and overclocked and all that stuff in the loop. So they've been testing it with their own like super high heat um, test rigs with no fans on the radiators, intentionally making it super hot. And they're trying to come up with a better product, which is a very good thing. <laughs> um, Coconut Monkey just texted me and said he's going to come over tonight and play with VR. 
Yay. Cooking the monkey's actually been here like all week. I like when it's summer because then he doesn't have school Monday through Friday and then work Saturday, Sunday. 370Z, pros and cons. I'd really love to know that. Okay, here's what we'll do. We'll talk about cars for a minute here for the next couple minutes. And remember, I'm getting out of here about 6 o'clock. So I apologize again if your donations have... If they took your money and they didn't display the donations to me, um, I highly apologize. In fact, um, Hobbs, when you tried to donate, did it take your money or did it fail? Because I want to know if people are, are, are donating here and I'm not seeing it. Because that's fucked up, YouTube. Seriously. My audio technica sounds good. So I pulled a lot of bass out of it. I'll get back to the 350Z comment. I pulled a lot of bass out of it. Because when I first had it, um, subwoofer users, yeah, um, rest in peace. I had the bass cranked. I was like, I wanted to get that that FM radio sound. Boom, ba 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 boom ba ba But then, you know, that's way too much bass. So I dialed it back to like that right there. And that's one of the reasons why I don't use USB mics. And I like to use amps like that. Because, ow, funny bone. Because I can, um, I can actually tune it. So, all right, 350Z, pros and cons. One, it's old. That's a con. It's a, it's an old car. The newest one you can get would be a 2008, which is already going to be eight years old at this point. Um, I don't, I don't know what's happened here. Okay, so Hobbs is saying it wouldn't take his money, but some people are saying that it did. I, sorry, guys, YouTube has has not notified us of a single donation. So if you have, I apologize for that. On, on behalf of Google, I, I, on behalf of Google, we're a sack of shit. There, I said it. I'm a sack of shit too, but you guys already know that. Okay, 350Z, it's at least eight years old for 2008. 2007 and eight are the HR model, which is the, the, the two best years of 350Z. So if you can get an HR, an 07 or an 08, an 08 you're golden. The transmissions from 2003 to 2000, Five had synchro problems. Lots of synchros going bad. Um, 2006, they fixed it. 2006, stay away from that year altogether. It had what's known as the rev up motor, and that was where they made an intake plenum change to get the engine revving a little bit higher to about 7,000 RPM up from 6,500. Those were the worst. It was only available for one year, and there's a reason for that. That one year, they warranted more motors than they ever had in the history of the 350Z or the Z33 because of oil consumption. All VQs burn oil, but the rev up motor, the rev up, the 2006 rev up, which was only available on the manual transmissions, by the way, the, um, the, the automatics did not get the rev up. So a little fun fact, when, um, when I went with TJ to buy his 350 and it was an 06, everything checks out, it's a good car. But I jokingly said, I think he made a huge mistake to his camera, that's what I was referring to. I was like, oh, he got a rev up motor. Um, but as long as he keeps his eye on the oil, he'll be fine. But yeah, so oil consumption was a problem with those. Um, they take a lot of, I don't know, they're kind of slow by today's standards. 350Zs are not fast at all. I mean, you've got, you've got four-door sedans that are going to be faster than you, but they handle really well. So if you want a car that handles good, that's a pro. Um, aftermarket parts for them, depending on what you go with, can be either cheap and like show car ready or expensive and track ready. And you'll find a lot of knockoff parts. So you gotta spend your time doing your research on the parts and whether or not they are knockoff or not. Um, like control arms, you'll see a lot of people's breaking lower, like rear camber arms. I'm sorry, you don't want a camber arm busting on you on the freeway. That's gonna be a terrible day. Um, so yeah, uh, insurance on them is pretty low. Because most insurance companies look at them as just a standard V6 and not a performance car, which is kind of funny because it is a sports car. Um, same thing with the 370Z. Because it's not my daily driver, I don't get a... Uh, I, I pay like $98 a year for full coverage on that car. But it's not my daily driver. It's a third vehicle. So that's another reason why. But they're fun cars. They really are. And you can get them for less than $10,000 if you shop around. If you want to spend that much on a eight plus year old cars. If you got a 2003, that's 13 years old. So that's a, that's a lot of money. Anyway, um, why I know see Skyline popping up? Why I know see Skyline popping up? What are you talking about? What are you talking about Skyline? Um, R32s are available here in, in the United States now, so that's fun. Hey Jay, do you think it's good to buy a gaming laptop or should I wait for the 1080M? 
And do you have any idea when that will come out? I have no idea. Probably in the next two or three months at the most. Gaming laptops. Uh, I'm going to be doing a review of the EVGA SC17. I have it. I've had it for about a month now. Um, but that, but laptops is something I want to spend time with before doing a review on it. I, I want to use it in real world scenario. I traveled with it to Seattle. Um, I, I want to use it in all of the real world scenarios. Not be like, here's a laptop. I'm going to put it on my desk, play some games and talk about it. No, what's it really like? Is it heavy? What's the recharge time like? What's the heat like? What's the battery life like? You know, did it leave me stranded in a meeting because I forgot to bring my plug? You know, that, that kind of thing. So I want to talk about all of that. But gaming laptops, for the most part, tend to kind of be seen, I think, amongst most people as being gimmicky. Um, only because the M series of GPUs are not very powerful. And so a lot of people tend to look at gaming laptops as being like, we slap some LEDs on there. We put an M series 960 in there, which is not a very powerful GPU at all. And we're going to charge $2,000 for it because it's gaming and it has discrete graphics. Um, I think that's how a lot of people tend to look at them. So it's going to be a difficult review because I think a lot of people hate the concept of gaming laptops. No. Uh, let's see. I like cars. Me too. Ram Jacinto. Jacinto. Ram Jacinto. One hertz monitor for the win. Okay. Um, oh, we dropped 57 frames. That's weird. Sorry about that, guys. Hey, Jay, are you still... I left the sim rig on. I bet you it's trying to download something right now. If I can update. Damn it. Thoughts on the Razer Core. Never touched it. Two 970s versus one 1070. So tired of SLA issues. Then get one 1070. You already answered your own question. Jay, please answer. Alex is asking. We'll see. I'll, we'll see whether I answer this. I have an i5. 4670K and a 1080. Should I upgrade my CPU or add another 1080? I just game at 1440. I don't think you should add another 1080 to a 4670K, depending on the games that you play. Um, the problem with this is you didn't tell me what panel you use. And that's just, that, that, if you're gonna take all this graphical, graphical, this, graf this graphomatical horsepower, and you're gonna send it down a DisplayPort cable to a shitty monitor, there's no point whatsoever. If that monitor is a 1080p TN panel, 60 Hertz, five millisecond or even say 10 millisecond response time it doesn't matter how much information you're shoving at it because your graphics cards are like freaking uh you know dragsters then your your panel is just gonna be like i don't know what to do here the here's some here's some images looking oh look they're tearing everywhere now because i don't know what to do with it because you turned off v-sync because you want to see all that horsepower and when you turn on V-Sync, your graphics cards are going to go down to like 10% usage when you game because the graphics cards are like doing this, waiting for your panel to get on board. Yeah. If you don't have a high-end panel, don't do it. Hope that made sense. What webcam do you using? Um, this is a Logitech C920. I bought it almost four years ago. The Logitech C920 has kind of been like the staple um, web uh, cam for the longest time. Like the C920. It's like the one everyone has. This just in. Found an actual topic Jay would like. This is probably being... This is from an anonymous coyote. Yep, this is Jerry. He's typing in the document right now. I've been ignoring him this whole time because it's driving him insane that I said he died on live stream. And then you guys have all been tweeting him. And he's like, stop telling people I died. So I've been ignoring him literally. He even tried to call and I clicked uh, disconnect on the call because I, I didn't want to let him come in here and prove that he was still alive. But he's typing in the document, so he's alive. It says, Future Mark is teasing a new benchmark today for DirectX 12. Wow, he made the text huge suddenly. <laughs> I, th I think he really wants me to see it. I was reading it. It was little text. And then suddenly he highlights all and then pff, makes it huge, like to get my attention. I was reading it and then it just suddenly went like big letters. Um, Future Mark is teasing a new benchmark today for DirectX 12 that will be out soon, called Time Spy. We'll work on all Windows versions, but DX12 only on Windows 10, obviously. Literally just got the email press release. Zero day. Ooh, we just got a zero day memo. Um, that's cool. That's cool, I guess. Um, I don't know. DX12 is just one of those things right now. 
And um, hold on, wife is texting me. I I eat the cookie. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, she texts me going, I think Little Jay's been hiding food. I think she ate the cookie that was on the counter. I was like, I, I ate the cookie. Okay, speaking of that, whatever happened to one millisecond monitors? Well, what you're hap what you're, what's happening now is a lot of panels are moving towards IPS and high refresh rate IPS, but the IPS technology it's, itself can't go down to one, one millisecond. But a lot of people are realizing that anything like five or under is, is perfect. In fact, you, you would probably be hard pressed to even notice a difference between, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna say it. As someone who's even like sensitive to high FPS, I notice the differences between refresh rate, hands down. But I don't think I could pick out the difference between say a 15 millisecond panel and a one millisecond panel. Like if you put them side by side and then switched them all around and they looked identical and said, which one of these is one millisecond? I don't think I could accurately tell you based on what I see. I think it would be a 50, 50 guess. Hey, Jay, can you please, please, please say potatoes? No. Even though I already did. Screw you. Okay. Does a 4460 bottleneck a GTX 1070? Make some benchmarks, please. I'm not going to go out and buy a, 46, a 4460 just to benchmark it for you. Um, depending on the games you play... A 4460 might show you reduced performance in a 1070. Using a single 1080 for the... Oh my god, this is GPU talk. Can you guys ask me something other than GPUs? I only got five more minutes anyway. 4K gaming, monitor, or TV? Um, okay, so... The biggest monitor you're really going to find for 4K... I think you can find some 32 inches, 32 inch monitors... I think you can find like actual monitors. Maybe you can find like more of those Korean like weird brands that are out there, but those are hit and miss on whether or not you actually get a good one. Um, 27 inch panels, 27 or 28 inch panels at 4K. They are, they are too small for native 4K. That's a, that's a 28 inch 4K panel right there, the mono price. And that's only on my test rig because I need to be able to test 4K when I do my benchmarks. But that has no G-Sync technology in it and no FreeSync technology in it because they don't play nice with some GPUs. Like um, a G the Acer G-Sync panel that I have, the 4K G-Sync panel, does not allow me to hook up an AMD graphics card and, and not have problems. Like I hooked up a Sapphire 290X to it and it like black screened as soon as I went into games. Hook up the mono price and it's fine. Um, so that I have the desktop set to 1080 on that. So the desktop set to 1080, but the games can go up to 4K. You deal with the same issue, very similar to like I said with, with Envy Surround, where when you switch back and forth between different resolutions in games and in desktop, um, you get weird things like sometimes you go into the game and it's just like, boom, it's four times bigger and you're only seeing a quarter of it on the panel because it scaled but didn't shrink it down to the screen size when it came out of the 1080p desktop um, and vice versa too. Sometimes you come out of the game and you go in and your icons are wee -dee -dee little bitty. And you're starting to go, oh, man, you're, re -click, you're clicking them and trying to s scale it. And all of a sudden, the computer's like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to scale the desktop. And then, boom, it goes really big because you scaled it. And then it forgot it needed to scale. And it scaled on top of your scaling and then just went, like, ginormous. So, yeah, it, it's one, that's, the, that's the problem when you deal with resolutions that are switching. And, and that's why I, I like to just stick with native res on everything I do on my computer that I play on. Not that. So what's a good ultra wide screen? Got a GTX 1080 and MSI guard like carbon. The motherboard you have makes no difference to the panel, by the way. Um, the X34 is an amazing panel. I've had no problems with it. But then again, this was sent to me by Nvidia, so I'm fairly certain these were all vetted long before Nvidia got them from Acer. And then once you know, so Acer found the best ones because, right? Let's say you're Acer and you're working with NVIDIA, and you're like, okay, we'll put all your G-Sync modules in here. And then NVIDIA goes, okay, well, we need, we need inventory of these because they've got our module, and we need them for demos and, tech, and reviews and stuff like that. So then you send a bunch of them to NVIDIA, and let's say you, you send a bunch of the ones with the problems people were complaining about, stuck pixels or, or light bleed or whatever. Are you going to be happy as NVIDIA going, what the fuck is this? These panels suck. No, you're going to pick the best ones, and you're going to send them. Well, that's what I got. 
Unfortunately, the X34 had a lot of terrible reviews on the first go around of the panel because they had a lot of problems. So if you can, if, if they fix those problems, then I highly recommend it. So unfortunately my panel, and that's why I never did an official review of this panel. One, I didn't get it from Acer. I knew it was handpicked. So I didn't think it was very in indicative of a true user experience from retail. I think Joker got one and it was terrible, I think. Then again, Joker hates like every panel he gets. Um, let's see here. Jay, when are we getting a 1070, 1080 stocks? I don't know. I'm not, I, why do people think I know when they're going to go on, like when they're going to be available at Newegg or Fry's or Microsider or whatever? How am I supposed to know? I mean, you guys think they're consulting me on their shipments? Aren't Acer and Asus panels pretty much the same? I don't know. Where'd you hear that? They're clearly two different companies. Just because they sound the same doesn't mean they're the same. All right. It's time to get out of here, guys. Um, thanks for hanging out. Sorry that the donation thing was broken. I um, had no idea. So uh, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and hop on out of here. Hopefully Jerry's here uh, back online next week. Um, he is going to be here two weeks from yesterday. So he's going to be here in just under two weeks. He's going to be here in California, melting to death, I'm sure, because it's hot even for me, and I live here. So we're going to probably be staying inside most of the time that he's here. But he's going to be here. It'll be a live tech talk inside the Nerd Cave here. Not, not as nice as his Nerd Cave, but the new Nerd Cave. He's never seen the new, as he calls it, the Drug Lord Mansion. So that'll be fun. And we've got to find some shenanigans and trouble to get into. But anyway... Time to get going, guys. Thanks for watching. I enjoy hanging out with all of you. Got to answer a lot of questions. That was fun. I would stream longer, but I've, I have chores. I have chores to do. Adulting sucks. With that said, I'm going to roll the outro. You talk about how much adulting really sucks. I wish. I wish I could still have all the things I have now. But I do that. Like, Mom! Mom, I want a sandwich! And then she would just bring the sandwich. And then you're like, now get out. I want to play games. And she's like, okay, I love you, son. And you're like, get out. I want to play games. Yeah, I wish I could do that again. But I can't. I have to adult. With that said, thanks for watching. See you next time.